but I don't want to be deceived. And if, if I'm deceived, how am I going to know I'm deceived? Because I'm deceived. Perhaps you haven't understood how deception works. We're going to look really briefly at that in this video. Deception isn't just random. It doesn't just happen. There's a mechanism that makes deception work. And this is a big subject, but I'm just going to try and give you the heart of it, the kernel of it, in the next few minutes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, Paul says to the Corinthians, don't deceive yourselves. So it must be possible to deceive yourself and also to stop yourself being deceived. How does that work? How does deception work? Well, here, in this passage, the Corinthians are, are, are fighting. They're arguing. Some are saying, Paul's the best. I'm for Paul. Some are saying, no, Apollos is the best. I'm for Apollos. Some are saying, no, Peter's the best. I'm for Peter. And then there's a really super spiritual bunch of saying, no, I'm for Jesus. We're for Jesus. But they're still missing it. And the point is, Paul is saying, what? There's no factions in Christ. There's no divisions. There's only one Christ. How can there be a one lot for Paul and one lot for Apollos? When we're one, when we're united. But they seem to have a sense that they can understand and know the truth more and be better than others. The thing about deception, it's a combination of your thoughts and what you can see with your mind's eye and your heart and the motives of your heart. You see, it says of Jesus that he never trusted himself to people. He loved them, he loved those around him, but he was not deceived. He could see their motives. And if you can see the motives of people, then you know what is going on and you know what their agenda is. So he wouldn't trust himself to people, he trusts himself to God. In fact, that's a truth and a reality for all of us, and that we need to trust ourselves to God rather than to people. In fact, if you trust yourself to people too much, that opens you up for deception. In Ephesians, Paul says, the God of this world has blinded unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the good news about Jesus. Now, you see the order there. It's easy for us to think that the God of this world has deceived me, so I'm blind to the gospel. But it, it doesn't quite work like that. I'm not powerless in it. The God of this world has blinded those who are unbelieving. That is, if you've chosen to not believe, if you've moved away from what has been revealed to you, and you say, I don't want that, I want a different reality, then the God of this world will help you believe your created reality so that you can live in it as if it's totally true. And so you're deceived. It's how it worked with Eve. She looked at the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And even though God has said, if you eat that, it will destroy you, you will die. Because Satan points out to her the good things about that, hey, you will have power over your own life. You'll be wise and able to work out what is good and evil for yourself. It's putting yourself at the center. And there's something intoxicating and enticing about that. She decides she wants that, so she moves into deception. And now she's deceived and is convinced that she's right. Have you met people like that who are convinced their view is right, even though to most people around them it seems obvious that that's not true? Now it's possible they're the only ones seeing the truth and everyone else is deceived. The only way you're going to know is the heart. Remember, Jesus knew what was in people, and so he didn't trust himself to them. The heart. How is your heart? If you want to move out of areas of deception in your life that you won't be able to see because 
you'll think you're right, you'll think you're okay in an area. How are you going to come out? Are you a victim? No. What you can do, as Paul says, don't deceive yourselves. Go into God's ways and your eyes will be opened. So if I soften my heart and go, God, I'm not clever enough to know everything. You know what? I'm not even clever enough to protect myself from deception. I probably only know this much of all that there is to know. God, I trust myself to you. Will you open my eyes and teach me? And I humble myself to the great possibility that I'm wrong and my life is lined up in certain areas. Now this is not insecurity. If you're trusting God and his goodness, if God and his goodness and his spirit is with you, then there's no need to be insecure. You may not have all the answers. You may not have everything tied down. You may have areas where you don't understand, but you don't know that you don't understand. But the spirit of God is with you. The spirit of God's wisdom is with you. And he teaches a humble, soft heart. If you go, God, teach me today, then you can be taught. Things can come to you in the right time, when your heart is ready, when your heart is ready to let go of the things that it's holding on to for security that are actually blinding you. You know what? This actually happens regularly to us when we're hungry and we read the scriptures. Have you ever had this experience? You're reading a passage, you've read it 20, 30, 100 times before, but suddenly something new jumps out at you. Bam! Like, wow, I've never seen that before. Why not? Well, because there was just a general foggy blanket over you, and now your heart is open enough for the spirit to highlight something to you. So, bang! Wow, you see in your heart rises and you think, whoa, you're aware of the presence of God with you because you're seeing truth in love. The truth is surrounded by the atmosphere of God's nature, his love. You can't have truth, reality, as we could say it, without the atmosphere of God's love. God's truth is... Is never harsh and evilly harsh. It's full of wholesome love. Focus on another, not trying to get for itself. Like God lays down his life for everyone. See, that's the nature of truth. It's infused with love. That's the nature of reality. It's infused with love. So if I'm becoming harsh in my truth, it's possibly a sign that I'm deceived, that I don't understand, that I've built walls. And these walls create security around my life. And that security is comforting. And it brings insecurity when those walls are shaken. But if we're going to learn, if we're going to grow, if we're going to change, if we're going to manifest Christ more, we have to have the walls that we've been comfortable with for a while that are not truth to be shaken. That is, we're going to see them as truth and they're going to be shaken and it's going to feel like your world is falling apart. Like the first time you meet the reality of Jesus, you think you've got life okay, you understand it, it's horrible, but you, you understand it, and then you're confronted with the reality of God, and it's, it's exciting and, and totally terrifying at the same time, that there is a God there who loves you, is beautiful, but there's a God there, whoa, and I have to open my heart and soften and go, yes, God. So deception is a combination of the thoughts and what I see in my mind and the motives of my heart. You can't have truth without love. They're entwined together. 
So it requires a soft heart to know truth.